Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are going to chat about if you don't use what you learn, you never really learned it. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard. And yet, in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jesse Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. Okay, so I feel like this is something that's fairly obvious, and yet at the same time, so many people run very, very far away from it. It's the whole use it or lose it concept, right? You can spend hours upon hours upon hours upon hours learning things, but have you truly learned it until you apply it? I Yeah, I I think we see this a lot, especially in business, because a lot of, at least in our circles, a lot of the people that we interact with love learning new things, Mm -hmm. but tend to shy away from the actual application of the things that they've learned. Yeah. One thing that actually popped into my head was my daughter and her second grade spelling words, right? And it reminds me of when I was in school too, right? Like you study, study, study for a few days to like jam pack all this knowledge into your brain just for the test and then it's gone. Because mm-hmm. you're like, didn't didn't actually need to keep that. And it's like, okay, so that's what's tough to me about, okay, you made her learn how to spell these words, but she didn't actually use them. She didn't apply them. She didn't make them matter. And right. so if I ask her now, like any of her words, I doubt she'll be able to spell them. But it's the same thing with like any test from high school. Oh, Yeah. I think there's a reason that there's that joke about parents not being able to help their kids with math. Yeah. Like this it's, sort it's, of idea of like, and I know I've, I've done it At, last night, actually my eighth grader was working on some sort of statistics. She was looking at like a scatter plot. She was like, do I have to count the outliers if I'm doing a whatever? And I was like, stop right there. <laughs> I never understood statistics and I cannot help you now. <laughs> yeah. Because and I, I learned 20 it. years I ago. <laughs> yeah, I learned it. I took the test and I immediately forgot everything because I've never had to use it again. <laughs> but it's not just that. It's also feeling like what you're learning is important to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like having that mentality from the get-go that – so first of all, it's not just about learning it. It's also feeling the meaning in it. Yeah. And then, because if you think about it, what are your memories in your whole life? Your memories are moments in time that meant something. Whether it was good or bad, you remember the things that actually meant something. So it's yeah. so odd, but like there is, I, I don't, this is the strangest thing. There is a word, a spelling word from sophomore year of high school that I remember because I had never heard it before. And I thought it was an interesting word. It's dilapidated, in case anybody's curious. So stupid. But I just always remember the moment I learned dilapidated because I'd never heard of it. I thought it was an interesting word. And then, like, I live in Kansas, right? So we have a lot of dilapidated barns all over the state. And so you're driving and you're like, oh, look, there's a rundown barn. It's dilapidated. And just from that, it's like I actually thought about the word. It meant something to me because I thought it was interesting that I had never heard of it. And I read a lot in high school. I still read a lot now. But anyway, yeah. and, and then actually applying it to my real life. And to this day, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the application part that we miss out on a lot in school. And then also once we get out of school and start learning new things. Mm-hmm. Like I, I see this a lot with languages. So people will start to learn a new language. But if you don't have the chance to actually practice it, then 
you're going to lose. But like I took four years of high school Spanish and a semester of college Spanish. And I remember almost none of it. I still get excited if I'm listening to somebody that's speaking Spanish and I can pick out one or two words. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like I never had a chance to practice it. I never had anyone to, you know, converse with or whatever. And so it just sort of fell by the wayside. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know my background, I also started Spanish as a freshman in high school, only I continued and I got a degree and a degree to teach it. (laughs) And I actually taught Spanish for six years. But what I can say is that I never actually truly felt like I was quote unquote fluent until, like Angela said, I had an opportunity to use it in the real world. Like I went through all of high school, most of college just learning, but never actually applying it to my real life until um, I was, I can't remember if I was like a sophomore or junior in college. Anyway, so I had been learning Spanish for like seven years and I got a job as a medical assistant at a clinic and it was my job to help get people checked in, get their blood pressure, that kind of stuff. And I helped the Spanish speaking patients. So I had to know how to use the language to get them checked in, to actually hear their symptoms, to write down, to like let the doctor know, hey, this is what they're here for type thing. And so I was put in a position and then the the normal translator lady, interpreter lady, she was having a baby. So she's like, Jesse, you got to get this. And the next like month before I have this baby. And so like that put an extra pressure on me that I had to practice. I had to get better. I had to use the language. That is when I finally can say that I became fluent. Before that, it was just all knowledge and learning and, oh, that's cool. But until I actually got to use it in the real world with real people in real situations, I had never felt comfortable saying I was fluent until that moment. I feel like that a little bit about German. I'm not fluent by any means. And Mm -hmm. actually, as far as like actual words learned, phrases learned, things like that, I learned way less than I ever did Spanish. But I remember more because I spent two years in Germany using it, speaking with German speakers, like trying very hard (laughs) to be understood. And so I, I retained more of that knowledge and processed it better. Um, so I, I feel like I can handle German a little bit more than I can handle Spanish just because I did get that experience, even though as far as actual learning, I had less training, so yeah. to speak, in German. And I feel like that phrase, use it or lose it, comes into play a lot with languages for good reason. You mm-hmm. use it or you lose it. And for me, now that I've been you know, an entrepreneur for Oh my goodness, like seven years. Look at us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I haven't taught Spanish. And so I haven't had like a real opportunity to use it on a daily basis. And so I'm afraid that I'll be losing it. So in order to practice, I um, sometimes, well, I, I recently downloaded Uh, I love Harry Potter and I downloaded the first book in Spanish and I've been listening to it in audio and then sometimes I'll read it on my Kindle as well in print. So I'm like seeing it, I'm hearing it and I'm practicing a story that, you know, I already know. And it's not that I have to listen to it in Spanish, but I want to because I want to practice the language. I want to practice keeping up, being able to process it quickly in my brain and this and that. Like my in-laws are from Mexico, but they both have been in the U.S. since the 70s. So they know English really well. So it's kind of like a Spanglish thing in their house. So we practice sometimes, but they've been in Mexico for like the last six months. And so they haven't really been around to practice with. And so it's like, gosh, yeah, I had to find my own ways to practice because it's not something I want to lose. So, yeah. Language is such a good example of this use it or lose it mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We see this with other, like, not just verbal languages, like coding languages. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done this with, I have learned JavaScript like four times, but I don't use it very often. So I have to look it up all the time. 
HTML, CSS, I use all the time. Don't have to look stuff up usually. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't find ways to apply it, like if I don't go out and purposefully find projects or even just little like side projects for me to do on my own to practice that skill, I forget it every time. And I end up going back and going, oh, yeah, that was how that. <laughs> yeah. Like during the first, well, what, like 10 to 15 weeks um, when I was on my maternity leave with my second kid, um, while I was feeding the baby constantly, because babies eat constantly, All I was the feeding the baby with one hand and learning to code JavaScript with an app on my other hand. I can't remember a single thing. No. I mean, it was yeah. like three and a half years ago. Like, I don't remember because I never applied it. I just like learned a few things right. and was like, and it's gone. It never meant well, anything to me. Yeah. And we all know the people that have like 50 courses they've bought mm -hmm. over the mm -hmm. years and haven't finished any of them or applied any of them. And I'm not picking on you if you are one of those people because I have several courses myself sitting in Teachable, Thinkific, member press of various peoples uh, that I have not finished or applied either. Um and a part of it is like you learn, you get excited, you start learning, mm -hmm. you get to the part where it's like, okay, it's time to apply it. And then you go, Ugh, I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready. You're a course <laughs> junkie. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Well, yeah, and but, well, I was just going to say from our episode last week, yes, where we introduced Marissa, she had said the same thing. Like, I took a course all about what I wanted to learn. And then in the end, they're like, now go do it. And you're like, what? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> you want me to, excuse me? <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, can you really say that you truly mastered anything or found success with it? If you don't actually use it, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the, the hardest part. And it's the hardest part in business, too, is mm -hmm. that we learn something new that could help us with our business or we get a new perspective um, or, you know, something like that. But then we hesitate because either things are going well enough in our business that we're afraid to disrupt it and potentially, you know, cause some issues there or we feel like if I do this, it makes it real. Like, mm -hmm. like for Mar if you I've taken the course and they said, now go do it. But if I go do it, then it makes it real. Then there's real things at stake yeah. to the actual application of it. <laughs> then I might actually fail. And mm -hmm. that is a big fear for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. When I was learning Spanish, it was kind of the same thing. Like, what if I don't understand what these people are here for something medical, like this is important. Yeah. What if I misunderstand them? What if I don't? I was watching a show on Netflix this weekend and <clears throat> it was this woman that was in another country and she was helping wait tables and misunderstood someone who was allergic to mushrooms and she accidentally fed the mushrooms and he started having a, I mean, it was a TV show, so it wasn't real. Right. Don't worry. But this is but a, still. yeah, it's, it's a great example. Like and he started having an allergic reaction, an anaphylactic shock type thing. And it's like, oh, my God, because you didn't get it right. Yes, things like that could happen. Of course, that was drama for a fake TV show. Right. But that's what you're afraid of. Like, what if I put mm -hmm. that person in an anaphylactic shock? <laughs> um, but you know what? What if you don't? Yeah. Okay, you don't yeah. always what have to, to go out and, and be in those perilous situations but just use what you learned. Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as what if, what if I try this new thing I've learned in my business and it doesn't work? Then it doesn't work. Yeah. You can try you something else. You think you really thought everything was going to work? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you thought everything was always going to be perfect all the time. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of, there's a lot of books, like business books. And business and time management books. Of course, Angela and I are time management book junkies. Yeah. But it reminds me of reading this one book. And kind of like we've said in the past, a lot of books are from like, not to like stereotype and pigeonhole, but these male CEOs 
who yep. don't have kids or just aren't fathers or aren't as involved as a mother. That's all I'm going to say. Right. Anyway, yeah. there's this one book we read and I got to the end of it and like there are a few cool tidbits, but I'm just like, this does not apply mm-hmm. to modern mothers at all. Like I can, I cannot apply this. And even when I tried to like take their framework and like outline what my life would look like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, I'm going to schedule time for this. Have you had a kid? If you put anything on your schedule, the chance of it happening is not a hundred percent. Let me tell you, because it's not all on you. It's also on your kid, allowing you to have that time to work out. Or allowing you to have that yeah. time to study quietly. <laughs> right. Especially when you work from home. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, Jesse was asking me earlier, because the last episode we recorded, we were in the middle of recording and we have a, a baby gate at the bottom of our stairs to keep our dogs from going up there. And it broke, so it wouldn't unlatch. And I had to keep getting up to put, pick my kids up over the baby gate back and <laughs> forth. So she was asking me if I had gotten it fixed. But it's things like that. Like, yeah, we're trying to record. I'm trying to work, but I have to keep getting up and putting my kids over the gate because it's broken and I don't have time to deal with it right now. <laughs> yeah, it it's it's so it's not just application. It's realistic application in order mm-hmm. to find success. Because you can't just apply things perfectly, especially as marketing moms. But it's also having that ounce of realistic expectations of applying things bit by bit in mm-hmm. certain ways to make them meaningful. And that's how you're going to yeah. find success finally. Because otherwise yeah. you'll and just become that serial learner oh, and yes. never apply anything. Yes. And I like what you said earlier about finding a way to practice it. Mm-hmm. Because we don't always, in the things that we we learn, we don't always have opportunities just drop into our life to practice things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to make your own practice. You have to download the Harry Potter book in Spanish. You have to set out to program a little web page because you need to practice JavaScript, Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not like for a client or anything, just because Mm -hmm. Um, you have to find those ways to apply things so that you can keep that knowledge fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, in Marissa's instance, taking copywriting, you got to create your own task. Yeah. Hey, let's pretend I had a client who needed this. Let me write it. Yeah. Or, you know, just – and those can't be bad because a lot of – in business, you can use those as your samples. Let's say yeah. you are – um, an Etsy seller. Hey, I'm going to practice this new technique of doing this thing that I sell on Etsy because now it's an example. I can put a picture on my website and maybe somebody will actually buy it or buy something similar using that technique. Yeah. Better practice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that is our advice for today. Use it or lose it, baby. <laughs> For your next steps, be sure to head over to marketingmomspodcast.com where we outline the next steps, not just to episodes like this, but all of our previous episodes. You can get on our mailing list and all those good things. Get your free goodies like our balance journal for free and all these other types of things. That is where to connect with us next. So marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you there and we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. We're so honored this is where you chose to spend your time. If this episode helped you in some way, please share it with another mom who needs to hear it. We're in this together. And if you're ready for next steps, free goodies, and more, head over to marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you next week.